Alright, hi everyone. Special hurricane edition of the show. Uh, I'm Lance Ash, and here with me on the sofa is my elderly wife, Bonnie. Yes, dear, what is it? The reason I say that is because she's been sending me some uh, photographs of her as a child, as a baby, that her dad's been sending her lately. Oh, what a cute little kid. Mm-hmm. How old are you in the one where you're skiing down the, the side of the hill? Ten. What are you on a pan or something? Or an official s- s- ski sled pan That's thing? That's the thing. I have zero memory of it. I remember having a sled as a child, but then we moved to the States, and so none of that came with me. The car did. And then after that, there's no sled. And I remember one winter grabbing a pan out of the kitchen and going down the hill in front of our neighborhood uh, uh, house. We had a house in our neighborhood. But this particular picture, I have zero memory of, and it's not on the hill side, on the road. Yeah, you're not on an official sled. It looks like maybe a, some sort of pan, or I don't know. sometimes kids slide down on pieces of cardboard or something. I don't really don't know. I don't know what it is. My dad has no memory of it either. Yeah, that neighborhood where you, your uh, mother lives, that's some big hills in there. I imagine if that's yeah. frozen over, you're going to get some. It was kick ass. Yeah. But the one with my dad, I have no idea. Because he wasn't living with us at the time. And I was with him and he had a picture of me. I I have no clue. I don't remember the 1970s jacket I was wearing. The hair is obviously 70s. Bonnie also got a picture of her as a baby being held by her mother and being doted on by her grandmother and great-grandmother. Yeah. Amazing. Who did I say my mother looked like in that picture? Oh, you said Paula Prentice, but though she's nowhere near as pretty as, pretty as Paula yeah. Prentice. Now, I grew up with my mother. Everybody went, you look like Linda Carter. No, oh. sorry. Uh-uh. Um, I am so happy. I've got a picture. Oh, dear. My son must be maybe three or four months old. It was a big family gathering down at my uncle's place. And my grandfather is holding my son on his lap while my father and... What? Your dad's in the picture, too. Yeah, my father and I are standing to either side of my grandfather. So you got four generations of of boys in my family with a similar picture. So I'm really... I'm glad um, I got to take that picture before he died. I don't even want to bring up that whole... It made me cry if I talk about when he died. But anyway... Um, so, the reason I say Hurricane Edition is because Hurricane Helene, or Helene, is moving its way up Florida into Georgia, and it should, the, the tentacles of it should be reaching here in the next eight hours or so, expecting not too bad of a rain here, but big winds. So, I'm hoping that the roof stays on the damn house, and I don't want to lose power because I'm on a three-day weekend, and I want to enjoy myself. I don't want to have to... Sit here in the, by candlelight, scribbling. Yeah, I haven't checked the battery-powered fans either. Well, it shouldn't be that bad. The last time we had power outage, it was still hot. And you cannot oh, sleep okay. in this house when it's hot. And uh, anyway, but let's enjoy our life while we still have it. Um, I have some, actually have some topics this time. Boy. Uh, and let's get the big one out of the way first. Um... Bonnie sent me a video compilation today of basically out-and-out anti-woman, anti-woman's rights uh, clips from uh, these far-right nutcases like Matt Walsh and so forth. And, you know, these people actively don't want women to have uh, rights in the public arena. They don't want them to have the right to vote and... They want it's 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 crazy, and um, once again, I want to reiterate that even though I'm a man, I'm a feminist, and that's not a it's not those things two things aren't mutually exclusive. Um, I remember years ago we used to watch King of the Hill till finally I got sick of their right wing reactionary shit, but um, 
there's one episode where Hank says to Peggy, what are you, becoming some sort of a feminist? And she goes, Hank, I am not a feminist. And I want to, you know, ask, well, why not? What's, what's wrong with you having the same rights and privileges as a man? Well, the quote I thought that you were going to do was when Hank's dad has to stay with him and Peggy makes him breakfast. And his dad is complaining. He, she's, been, she's just served him a huge breakfast. And he says, I see bacon. I see ham. Where's my sausage? Woman goes to work. Man loses sausage. And that was a very apt joke. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about that just last night at work, and I thought, well, you know, she's a traditional stay-at-home mom, but she's not. She's a she's a she temporary teacher, a fill-in a, teacher. Yeah, she's a substitute teacher. That's right. Well, anyway, that's just um, I, my, uh, earlier today when I was thinking about stuff to talk about for the show, uh, my my dander was up, my ire was um, uh, rising about this whole issue, but I can't seem to work up my anger that much now. But and um. The- video I sent you, there is this man behind a pulpit that said, if I'm on a jury Mm -hmm. and a woman gets raped and she dresses like she's asking for it, I'm not going to find the man guilty. But she was asking for it. And that made me so mad. Years ago, I did a comedy skit that was something to the effect of man walks down an alley and he gets robbed and he goes to the police station to report it. And he gets treated the same way that women are treated when they're raped. What were you doing there? What were you wearing? Why were you carrying that kind of money? That sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And that kind of attitude, my God. Several years ago on the BBC, there was an article where women wore the clothes that they were wearing when they were raped. It started off with this one woman who was wearing a sweatshirt and sweatpants. Yeah. And she said, how could anybody think this was sexy? Or or so provocative. I couldn't control myself. I got a hard on and I had to slap her around and, and well, my, you know. My response to the whole, well, she obviously wanted to look the way she was dressed. Buddy, she may have been out to dance that night, but she didn't want to dance with you. Yeah. Um, and, you know, this whole thing is reaching a fever point as we approach the possibility of us, ha- fi- of this country finally having a woman finally. president. And I'm hoping that once Kamala's been in office a couple of years, some of this will blow over. And people will go, oh, well, she's competent. She's, she's, you know, she's able to do, you know. Well, but I don't know. Maybe it'll make it worse. The thing is, is if the Republicans continue to have the majority in the House, mm-hmm. then they've already sworn that they are not going to pass anything that comes from Kamala. They are going to continue with this obstructionist policy. And when that happens, and you have a hard time getting anything passed... I mean, look what happened with the border bill. Republicans and Democrats joined up this year to create a border bill that they thought would satisfy all sides, and they were ready to put it to a vote, and Donald Trump let it be known, if you pass this bill, I'm not going to have immigration to, to run on as an issue. I don't want you to pass it. So that tells you they really don't want to solve the problem, they just want to create problems so they can get into power and create more fucking problems. Yeah. I mean, their whole mantra at this point is government doesn't work. So if any... if, if they, we're going to prove it by making sure it, it doesn't it, work. Exactly. If they, if they do anything that makes government more efficient or more operative, you know, then, oh, we're undercutting our, our basic argument. You know, we, we should privatize the government. That is ultimately the goal here is to have corporations run things yeah. because they have a profit motive and that makes things more efficient. So you'll have more efficient government. Of course, you won't have any say in how the government will run, but at least it'll be efficient and we can make some change while we're, while we're doing it. There was an expose on um, PBS a couple of weeks ago. It was about how 
private corporations went to small communities and bought their water service. Yeah. And they privatized it and said, oh, we have to make these improvements. So we're going to start charging you. And people started getting $250 a month bills. And these are retirees, a lot of them. And they said, we can't afford this. We can't do this. And the big kicker, none of the things they said they had to do ever got done by these companies. They're there to bilk these people. Well, that's one of the things on Michael Lambert's YouTube channel he points out is that the water services in in, in, U, in the UK are all owned by foreigners. And, um, and what's going on there? They're dumping all their waste and sludge into the freaking channel, and it's causing toxic levels for a lot of the fish. Well, the, yeah, a lot of the... Uh, canals and rivers yeah. in the in the UK are full of human waste um, because deregulation doesn't. It may lead to greater profits, but it leads to a lessening of standards and lessening of services. Yeah, the Chevron defense was overturned earlier this year by SCOTUS. Basically, Chevron back in the eighties went to the Supreme Court, and they said. We don't like the fact that government agencies can tell us and regulate these rules. And the Supreme Court said, I'm sorry, you have to defer to government regulations. This past Supreme Court session, they overturned Chevron deference. So right now, there are over 100 cases across the U.S. Who are, that are coming up before the courts where the judges are being asked to make a decision based on whatever they feel needs to be done and not using the expertise mm -hmm. of the government to That's make right. these decisions. And when you have areas like Texas, in particular, where people end up going to court and the judges have been paid for their they receive campaign funds from a lot of these offending companies, guess what they're deciding? for that's they're going to decide for the companies in yeah. their favor and they're going to say oh this is overreach by the government we can't have that let them do business and they're going to ignore the greater good they're going to ignore science we saw that happen with the damn Dobbs de decision they I mean, overturned roe v wade even though the american medical association the american college of obstetricians and gynecologists and 20 other groups went to them and said you need to keep abortion safe and legal as it stands because it allows women to receive necessary services and they listed all these other reasons and they ignored the science and that's what's going to happen again yeah yeah, some things in life are unpleasant, but you have to do them. I mean, you, you may, may not like the fact that you have to go to the bathroom, but you have to do it. You have to deal with the consequences. You, may not you can't like just the deny the fact you that you have, go to the bathroom. You may not like the fact that you have to pay your taxes, but if you want to live in a civil society and have the benefits of that greater society, then you need to pay your taxes, and everybody needs to pay their fair share. So... I mean, I can't begin to tell you how cheap our road taxes are. We basically paid several hundred dollars when we bought our cars for our tags. That's supposed to cover the cars wear and tear on the roads. Then we pay $20 each year for tags. That doesn't begin to cover the, the amount of use that we get out of those type of things. So what happens? They end up getting subsidies from the federal government to pay for the roads, etc. Yeah, I mean, partly... I want to say that a lot of this is just the natural sociopolitical pendulum swinging back and forth because 120 years ago, the robber barons were in charge, the trusts were in charge, and, and we had trust busting. And uh, the labor movement fought tooth yep. and nail and died and were murdered yep. in the name of pushing for massacred all these you know rights we have today and then people have got become complacent and become actively anti the very thing that's good for them and i think you know i think eventually if things that's, last long enough that that is the key if things last long enough we're at that point the pendulum 
where it may not continue to swing. Yeah. We're looking at a hurricane right now, and it's going to cause billions of dollars of damage. Well, and that's going to affect the insurance industry. We had the tech bubble burst. We had the housing bubble burst. I'm expecting the, the insurance bubble to burst. Already, insurance companies have pulled out of places like California and have risen, uh, um, had the rates rise so much in places like Florida. People are moving out. Well, I, you know, when I say uh, if things last long enough, I mean, we're approaching a point where we're going to have digital surveillance of every person on the planet 24 hours a day. And I think it was Orwell said, if you want to see a vision of, of the future, it's a boot stamping on a human face throughout, you know, perpetuity. And so, I mean, I it may be that... too late. What? I don't know that we're going to get to that point of digital surveillance because we've got so many catastrophes just piling on top of each other. Well, not only that, people talk about, you know... And then the Civil War. The, the uh, you know, day of computer surveillance, you know, eternal. But the thing is, it costs a lot of power uh, to run that type of digital operation. I mean, we're already... We're seeing that burning out. AI. Com- yeah, exactly. AI it and Bitcoin and all this other shit takes a lot of, of, of power. power, a lot of money to run to get that power. So, so you know, prices. and plus there may be a huge population die off due to many factors. People just choosing not to have babies, or there being massive famine, or you know, who knows. All I know is that I hope that one day I'll be safely dead and they won't digitally reanimate my corpse or make my brain cells live on, you know, to, so that they can, they'll make me dance for their amusement. Or, uh, anyway, hey, look, why don't you hold this for a second while I get the box over here oh, ready? Okay. Don't okay. press any buttons, just hold it. Yes, dear. Can you mask explain that again? Yes, it's too complicated for a female to understand. Oh. Help me. It's heavy. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, what's heavy, dear? Well, that not. box of CDs? Hmm. Hold on a second. Don't, don't make fun of you? Don't mock the afflicted. <laughs> to quote Hard Day's Night. All right. Now, uh, I, have with, I have before me a box partially filled with CDs that I'm going to donate to the Winterville Library bookstore because... Um, we have too much junk in this house for one thing, and oh, number two, yeah. um, I just feel it'd be nice to donate to those people. So I thought before I get rid of these, I would go over them with you, and you can sort of see why I'm getting rid of these. Okay. And Bonnie Let's can see what we've got Bonnie here. can get to see what I'm getting rid of here. I tell you what, um, I'll put the, yeah, I'll put them put them between here. All right. I have first of all, this first album is. Oh, I tell you what, I'm gonna move these over. And we can do it that way. Okay. All right. First album is written in Chinese. I have no idea what this Did is. Did we try listening to it? I think we tried, and it's basically easy listening piano pieces. So, oh, oh no, this is this is Japanese. Yeah, this is Japanese. I'm sorry. Oh, my man can tell the difference in the in the what is it called? Is it manga? What is it? The characters are called katana. Uh, uh, kanji kanji. Are, are the ideogram are the word picture symbols. Then this also here. It's Japanese. Or it says made in Japan. Well, that yeah, also it says made in Japan. And, ah, but can. also, <laughs> there are these hiragana and katakana um, symbols in between the kanji characters, and that's a, that's a giveaway that it's Japanese. Years ago, I memorized Your all the Japanese lessons are paying off. Yeah. All right. So I don't. I, Get rid of it. Yeah, get rid of it. I, I was going to say, if you want to sec, uh, no, veto any of these, and we no. can keep them. I, not that one, anyway. This is a Korean pop duo, and I don't think it's very good. I got this for the novelty of it, and I we're going to get rid of that. Is it the kind of music we play on a Korean soap opera? Well, it's only two of the titles are listed in English, and one of them is Two Men's Story, and the other is Rainy Night. So I don't know what in the hell this is. Oh, it's... Yuri, anyway, Yuri Sangja dot soundpump dot com. So if you know what that is, you can look it up. All right, next one. This is also Korean. This is this guy's a hunk. Hyun Seong Min. Uh, he's got his shirt halfway off with his little muscles rippling. He's got that Sunny Crockett Miami Vice kind of a. Uh, 
Coden slacks. Yeah, yeah. The name of the songs are Stay, Michelle, Dream, okay, Candy next. Girl. Next. My next, Love. Next, next. All right, we're getting, this is Wang Chung, their big album, Mosaic, with the big hit song, Everybody Have Fun Tonight. Wait a minute, you obviously have to ask her son if he wants this. Um, we're not keeping stuff just for okay. the hell of it. Okay. 1986. I like that song, but I'm not going to keep this album just for that Everybody one song. Wang Chung tonight. Yeah. Mm. This is an album a friend of mine made for me. The name of the band is Decluta, and the name of the album is Planet Fear. Uh -oh. And I just um, is that friend listening? He's probably listening, but he'll okay. he'll 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 understand that I just didn't care for it. I'm getting rid of it. Okay. All right. This is a solo album by Carlos Alomar, who was the guitar player for many people, mainly most well known as being uh, David Bowie's guitar player. The name of the album is Dream Generator, and it's really boring. It's got really 70s, late 70s art on it. Isn't right? that horrible? I'm at the front, dude. The, well, the, the back, look at that pink haze around him. Screw that. All right. Throw away. Now, this is a band called The Truth. The name of the album is Weapons of Love. And Weapons of Love was the big hit on here. This is from 87. And it sounds like Christian rock. <laughs> no, it, it's just, I mean, it's on IRS Records, which was a big deal at one time. But anyway, you know, around 87, I used to listen to 96 Rock a lot, and uh, 96 Rock a lot, and the song Weapons of Love, they used to play a, a good bit for a, a month or so. Don't tell Peter about that. Just get rid of it. And it's just, it's just, mm, nothing. This is a punk group called The Suicide Machines. The name of the album is Battle Hymns. Uh, I used to listen to this once in a while. All the songs, all the songs on here are about a minute long, and it's just a big nothing. Uh, this is a, a comedy record by Adam Sandler called What's Your Name? And I don't like Adam Sandler, so that's gone. This is a band called The Velvet Teen. I really don't even know much about them. All right, this is another Chinese record. This is called Days in a Green Hill. Next. And it's piano music. Oh, I want to read the back. Can I read it? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Peter's walking through. Peter, are you going in at 8 instead of 7? Awesome. All right. Good luck. Living Good luck. with a cat called Freckle. The oh, pianist no. Firefly absorbed oh, himself in the sunshine, rain, and air. Oh, scented with all the trees and flowers of a hill, the musician melts his days in the hill into graceful piano melodies. Wait a minute. Why are we getting rid of these CD cases? Okay. Because in the past. Like this. I don't see any reason to keep it for anyone's sake. So why not salvage the CD? No, no, okay, 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 here's why. About two years ago or so, I went through all my CDs and I picked out some I didn't like and I threw away just the CD and kept the case. And first of all... I hate thin cases. First of all, I um, regret having gotten rid of some of those CDs. But second <laughs> of all, I have a... A, a fund of empty jewel cases okay. so there's so no reason yeah, yeah exactly yeah, okay. this is a double cd Smokey robinson and the miracles anthology Ugh. and i just don't give a shit about that Wait a minute, what, what songs are on here i'm just curious i don't want to keep it uh, 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 uh. jesus i can't tracks of my tears i've heard that one uh, keep going with your talking. I'll, I'll yell out something I hear. No, I, I want you to pay attention to what I'm doing. Uh, okay, hang on. You got time. The Tears of a Clown? Wasn't that also on That was charts? a big hit, yeah. Oh, my God. Dun, dun, dun. And, of course, there's dun, some dun, version dun, 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 of dun, dun. Satisfaction. We don't know if it's a cover or he's a... No, no, he did, he, did a, he did a version of it, yeah. Oh, my God. I'm not a big fan of that kind of music. Did you know George Harrison was a big Smokey Robinson fan? He even did a song called Smokey as a tribute to him. It may have killed him a year earlier. <laughs> uh. Well, smoking <laughs> killed him, so um, yeah, I guess yeah. so. All right, if anybody remembers the shitty metal band Wasp, this was a attempt at a comeback from what, them. Wait, that's W dot A dot S dot P. Yeah. As in white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, or yeah, was there it, another? Uh, we are sexually perverted. Is what the, the, <laughs> Oh, this is their album unlawful K carnal knowledge. This is their one? album KFD, which stands for Kill Fuck Die. Jesus. And uh it's horrible. 
Kill, fuck, die. Didn't that become like a little internet meme? I don't think so. Anyway, this David is uh, kill, David Lance Skyline Fire Dance. This is a double CD, and it's just easy listening piano crap music. And there's no need for you to keep the double discs, double. Yeah, I'm cases. tempted to keep the double discs. This is what they used to call these fat boy cases. I don't know if I. Maybe I'll keep the. I don't know. Anyway, this is another album that my friend made me. Uh, this is Alchemist, uh, Austral Alien. Astral? Austral. A U. Austral. Austral. Oh. Uh, it's on Relapse Records, so it should be a big deal, but I, I just never got into this record. Um, there is a uh, magazine in Brazil. It's, a, it's a, like a, a satirical magazine called The Clinic, and they put out these their own series of CDs. This is Erto Moreira, who was a famous... We went over this last week. Anyway, um, it's just easy listening sound of wind chimes and bells and blocks being hit together and okay, stuff. Okay, next. Alright, <laughs> this is a band called Magic Car, and the name of the album is Yellow Main Sequence, and I thought it was going to be good just based on the cover, but it's a pile of nothing. <laughs> This is Zillertaler Schützenjäger, which is uh, songs for children in German. In German, and it's of course. Crap. Uh, this is called the Society of Rockets, and I want to see the art. The name of the album is Where the Grass Grows Black. It's sort of like mm, an attempt at retro rock, but it's not a very you kind of credible in on that seventies fat. Um, the the lettering, lettering yeah lettering yeah it's not even a font or a typeface somebody somebody drew that yeah. those letters yeah okay next okay. yeah it's I tried it and it's just not my thing this is a Christian band yeah called Duke. the Billions uh, if anybody's ever heard of them it's on Northern Records 2002 and the name of the album is Never Felt This Way Before we're here to collect your billions of dollars. Put it in the collection. I, this is one of those albums I got at a library book sale, and I picked it out because it does have a really cool retro 70s album cover with that orange and, and, and yellow and, and sort of off-brown color Again, scheme Again, with together. a weird font, too. Yeah, but, but the music is just like... It's not even hardcore Christianity. It's just like, well, What's you know... Music? Yeah, Christianity makes us feel good, and I should be nice to my neighbor, and, and that kind of crap. It's not like, you know, uh, chain up women if they try to step out of the line. Uh, this is called Pilgrimage, Land of Ecstasy, remixes by Junior Vasquez and Funky Green Dogs. It's a slim line case. I don't even know what the hell it is. This is a one-man band called Black Lab. I gave it this. It's cool-ish Cover art. Kind of a woodcut sort of thing. Yeah, sort of a woodcut looking thing. Almost a Kathy Cole that's in its uh, absolute uh, despair and appearance. I gave this a shot. Take a look at it. It I, it looks like it would be cool, but it's really kind of boring. It looks like it's depressing. So, like I said, Kathy Colwitz. Kata Kolwitz. Kata Kolwitz. This is an album by a band called B Tribe. The name of the album is Sensual Sensual. And it's. Uh, Nothing, as far as I remember. The name of this band is Passion Seeds. The name of the album is Release, and it's a big nothing. Sure, you want the people at the bookstore to know you donated this shit? <laughs> hey, I have been through the CDs that they have on offer up there 50 times, and this is way better than what they've got available. Oh, Lord. This is Spirogyra, which was a big jazz fusion pop album uh, or band. The name of the album is Incognito, and it's the kind of jazz that I hate. It's just waffle. Wait, wait, this is the point where you t tell your, your dad's thing about mute, uh, jazz, what he thinks jazz is. Kenny. Kenny G? I don't think... My dad might like Kenny G. I'm not sure that he likes him. Yeah, he put, put it on in the car with you one day. Did he? You like jazz, right? Yeah. <laughs> Years and years and God. years ago. My cousin is just naturally funny. And we used to hang out together and make each other laugh all the time. And we, I was over at his house. We were watching MTV and they had a Kenny G video. And um, 
they showed the audience and right up against the stage were all these old ladies waving their hands in the air like, oh, we're so turned on by your music, Kenny G. And he said, <laughs> instead of throwing panties on stage, they're throwing their depends. <laughs> I was going to say girdles. Yeah. All right, this album is the a... support stockings. This band is called Six O, and the name of the album is Wait and See from Dallin Records, 1998. And it's, as far as I remember, a big nothing. This is actually pretty good. I, this is the one that I'm sort of iffy about keeping. Oh, you'll regret it ten years from now. Yeah, what is it? the name of the al- name of the band is the De Flowers, and the name of the st- is that pronounced Finn or Fan? It's it's French for oh, ending. It's Finn. Finn, and it's sort of pretty good. You know, just straightforward pop. When in doubt, don't toss it out. All right, well. Set that aside. You didn't set it aside. You put it up over the toss. Okay, here we go. Okay. All right, this is a punk <laughs> band uh, called Guttermouth, and it's... Puke Balls? It's two of their EPs put together called Puke and Balls. Uh, what a puke ball. Listen to some of these <laughs> album titles. Jack LaLanne, I'm Punk, Mr. Barbecue, Bruce Lee vs. the Kiss Army, Carp, Ooh. Toilet, uh, Reggae Man, just a fuck. Malted vomit. You remember that later, babe. <laughs> <laughs> this is the band Hanoi Rocks, uh, which they were I heard of fair. That. They weren't great, but they were fair. But this is a live album. And is I, this 80s? Yeah, they were big in the 80s. Um, oh my god, that's close. Yeah, the worst, their worst album is we the one that I like the best. They do. Who? <laughs> Devo. Oh. Don't pick on Devo. I said Devo dresses better than they do. Oh, um, but uh, they... Anyway, this is a live album, and I'm not a big live album person, so I'm getting rid of it. This is Circus Diablo. When the cult went on hiatus, uh, Ian Asbury did um, some solo stuff, and he sang with The Doors. and some. Well, Billy Duffy did this record, and it is the most crap pop metal generic lyrics generic singer garbage i expected so much more from billy duffy he is a great guitar player but this is just i ordered this through the mail thinking oh yay yay i'm on a cult trip lately and this will be good no it's garbage oh and who is that emulating that front cover front cover yeah it kind of reminds me of the black crows no, not really. You don't think so? No, no. I, I swear there's a little bit of hair. No. This is an album on Ryko Disc Records, which is usually a sign of quality, but uh, the name of the band is Buick McCain, which is the name of a song by uh, T-Rex, and the name of the album is The Pawn Shop Years, and it's just not very good, to be honest with you. Anyway, so that's all we have so far to donate. I wish we had more, but I've already picked through the CDs many times. Do we own any of the Jody Grind? N- no, I... Hold on. Let me it's just it. that you said something just then about a band being named after a group, uh, after a song, and so I thought of the Jody Grind. Well, see, when we got married, I thought you had a Jody, Jody Grind cassette or CD. I also had Indigo Girls, but you know, and Katie Lang, and well, what, you still oh. have the Katie Lang, but what happened to? The, I thought you still had the um, Indigo Girls album. Oh, no, I don't think I got it anymore. Got off the old lesbian trip, man. But Jody Grind, they were from Atlanta. They weren't from Athens, right? No, they're from Atlanta. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, After Dink and Lunchbox died, they kind of disbanded. When we got married. You, you always talk about how I introduced you to a bunch of music, but you introduced me to some stuff. You had the Till the End of the World soundtrack, which had a bunch of good stuff on it. Yeah. And sort of roundabout, you introduced me to some stuff. R.E.M. Because I introduced you to R.E.M. I knew you. Maybe a little it, bit. But you hadn't gotten into the original stuff. No, that's not true. Hold on a second. Back up. I thought we I weren't married yet, and I had R.E.M.'s Monster album, because I used to listen to that when I worked at the uh, the What's convenience store on 20, on 20... What? What's the frequency kid? Isn't that on there? That's not on... Maybe that is on that album, but that album has um, Crush With Eyeliner, which is a good song, and... Uh, 
give me back my name. And uh, uh, anyway, that's a pretty good record. It's been years since I listened to it. That'd be a good record to listen to on like a long on a long trip in the car, an hour long trip. Yeah. But anyway, um, you introduced me to the X Files. Yeah. And through that, we got the X Files soundtrack. And you actually and our son found out about um, uh, Red Right Hand before oh, I ever that, heard yeah. it. Because when when Peter was little, he would say, "Play Red Right Hand, play Red Right Hand." Yeah. Oh. And Peter and I then got into PJ Harvey as a result. So, you know, she did that one song with Nick Cave, which is fucking awesome. Was it Henry something? Anyway. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it's she... too bad that her albums aren't better. We have th- three of her albums. Something and I... to the Water, Fish in the Water. What was that one? Yeah, I don't want to get up off my butt and go. It's right. I I see where it's at, right over there. Mm. Um. You also, I tell you, another one you introduced me to was Concrete Blonde. Yeah. Bonnie's CDs are all in her room in an inaccessible spot, so I never get to go in there and look at. Right next to the bed. You know where the bed. Yeah, but the way you've got them. I have them arranged. Double stacked. Yeah, I don't like that. Piece of cardboard between them because. I like my things to be in alphabetical order based on the artist. Whereas yours is this sequence of, okay, this is the Beatles. These are the four guys in the Beatles. The, everything in this, the four guys in the Beatles is all around it. Everything that was ever done with a collaborative project with any of the guys in the Beatles is, done, is then around it. And then around those people are... It's just the stream of consciousness kind of thing. That's why we have to have you find everything in the CD. Well, section. also, I like to have my CDs, my albums, in chronological order. So, like the Stones, they oh, are I can all buy in, it in 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 publication in in release date. Yeah, but that's within who they are. But uh, the only large category classifications we have, we have. 99% of the jazz is all together. All the orchestral music is together. But that sort of also includes the Wyndham Hill stuff and the band Oregon. We do have which bleeds the into jazz. Vocal vocalists. The, the, the great is separate. Yeah, the classic singer jazz. type yeah. singers like yeah. Sinatra and, and Robert Goulet and, 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 and uh, the Velvet Fog and all those people are all together. Uh, and Barbara Streisand's in that category. Jesus Christ, we've got Elvis somewhere up there on that shelf, I think. Um, Our special I think, shelf. See, I got the first two Elvis box sets, the ones that were like With his everything box. he ever did. I think they did some later ones, but um, <coughs> I had the boxes separate from the CDs, but I think we put the CDs back into the boxes, and I don't know where the boxes are now. I don't know. I've got... My God, you you own the Yoko Ono box set. Yeah, I bought that when it came out. But it's, that is not next to the Beatles. No, because I, I like to keep it in the box, and there's nowhere to fit it in these cases, these shelves. So I, it's, I got that in my room. That thing cost me 90 bucks. Fuck, it's like that, what, Miles from Japan? Didn't you do that? Didn't you buy some Japanese import of Miles? Well, at one time, when... when the, the store Best Buy first came in the, the area. There was one in Athens, there was one in Atlanta. And this is before we got married. But when they first opened, they had a monstrous uh, CD uh, department in the store. And they had this, basically, they, the CDs were there just to get you to go to the store so then you turn around and buy a washing machine. And when people when they realized people weren't interested in the washing machines, they got rid of all the CDs. But but anyway, they had all these imports, and I got a sixty dollar import Danish import of Miles Davis's album um, "Get Up with It," um, which is a fantastic record. Punk, it's early seventies fusion, and it starts off with a t- how long is that song? <clears throat> 10, 15, 20 minutes long, 30 minutes long. It's called He Loved Him Madly. Oh, and it's, it's um, about, um, was it? It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a 
Yeah, Duke Ellington. It's a tribute to Duke Ellington. Yeah. And it starts off very quietly and builds and builds. And Brian Eno said when he heard it, it was a major influence on him because he didn't... It opened his mind up to what you Potential. could do. Yeah, yeah, the possibilities. But I used to get all kinds of imports, uh, Miles Davis imports there. Ooh, speaking of Eno, we got to listen to that Down by the River, what is it, song? Yeah, Down by the River. Yeah, that's I think it's the of the song. song. Yeah. That's, that, whole, that whole album's great. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I just... I, I, like I've said before on many occasions, when I was younger, I wanted a lot of CDs. Now I have a lot of CDs. And in fact, I have so many that I, there's stuff I just don't listen to. And so, and I collect stuff just because at the thrift store, you can get it for two bucks. And then you wind up realizing, mm. so I'm going to get rid of some of this stuff, make some, make some room. I got stuff in my, in my room. I got some stuff in the studio. Bonnie's got some stuff. Peter's got some stuff. Oh, Lord. You remember, what was it, Robert's Service poem? Yeah. About, we've got it posted around here. Something to the effect of... The book collector. Yeah. Oh, to be locked away in a prison? To have all the time on in, in the world so you could read all the books and stuff? But, but the poem is, it talks about exactly our attitude, which is, you see a book, and you're like, oh, I want it, even though you know you're never going to read it, you know you possibly are not going to read it, you just want it, and that's what book book collectors are. They they want the books. Oh, Album it's collectors so nice are like that. They that want do want to peruse them. Right. I mean, consider our art book collection. It's fucking amazing. It overflows. It's in that cabinet, that cabinet, that cabinet, and below that cabinet. Yeah. And then there are some random books here and there. But <clears throat> you know what? I think. After I use up this series of of illustrations that I use to accompany these videos, I'm going to start taking some pictures of our house, specifically certain shelves, so people can get it, can get an idea of what yeah. kind of book collection we have. Uh, well, I went through a phase. Dog. Yeah, I went through a phase where I would get these big picture books of rock stars like you know and i've got tons of books of led zeppelin photographs and rolling stones photographs beatles photographs and uh that was the really cool part about getting these new shelves we have in our living room was being able to go through and organize everything better than it had been we had it in general categories but because the bookshelves have been put in when we moved in 20 years ago we've added to them and some of them ended up in the wrong spot and when we got these new bookshelves last year two for a hundred and fifty dollars and they're freaking amazing um i was forced to go through and well we went through and we got rid of quite a few books mm -hmm. um but I was forced to go through and categorize everything, and now we have them so well organized. Well, um, uh, we used to have. See, when you're a poor man, you have to do what you know, what, what do with what you have, what you can afford. I and we had, shelves. yeah. Well, they're even they. Well, the things they were they were cheaper than IKEA by a long shot. We had these they pasteboard were the billy, billy shelves. Anyway, these, these, these shelves that you buy in a box and you assemble them yeah. yourself, That's... and it's just, you know, pasteboard so... stuff, laminate, and they're shitty, and we finally got something to replace them. And I? Yeah. I went to... You may. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the, the ability to speak as, a, as an individual. Mm -hmm. I went to Habitat for Humanity some point last year, and I walked in, and they had these two matching shelves. Mind you, these are china cabinets. Right. And as such, they have the top have the double doors, and the shelves are wooden, and they have slots in them for the plates to sit against. And then underneath the top section is the closed off section you have two sets of oh was that two or three or four we've got multiple drawers a layer of drawers that's for your silverware and yes and those are partitioned off 
and then underneath are these hinge doors, three of them, and those have shelves under there. So we were able to take all the best books and put them behind glass, and then underneath in the doors we have the wooden shelves under there, so we have the overflow. If something was too large to go into the cabinets, the glass cabinets, they went down below and they're placed sideways, which is the proper way to store an oversized book. And then in the drawers themselves, I was able to use those to swap out decor. I changed out things in the house. So I've got a variety of things, uh, collections of boxes and pottery and stuff like that that would be on display at different times during the I, year. I thought you were going to use the drawers for like displays of like collections of like seashells or stuff like well, that. I had thought about that, and I do have some collections of things in there, but once I realized the way that I like to rotate out things in the house, this is an excellent place to store these things. And the partitions are movable mm -hmm. in the drawers, because there are slots with this balsa wood divider, and um, so I can have it fit in you know, the thing in the space so it doesn't bump around. Little tip to uh, people just starting off establishing a household and a home. Good don't it. try to get everything all at once. No. Just make do with what you've got and then slowly over time accrue the necessary pieces. And keep your eyes open. Don't get, don't get the brand new thing. Don't get the flashy thing. Look for stuff that's used, uh, second-hand, vintage, thrift store stuff, just, you know, and use your own natural inclinations to, to make your aesthetic choices. Don't go to some fucking... The, Hobby you know, Lobby or don't, Target. Don't go to the flavor of the month decor Ashley person, Williams. you know. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, we've got a dresser in here. That dresser used to be part of a larger set either belonging to you or Kevin. That dresser used to be painted white. Well, actually, a long time ago, it was painted, it was natural wood color, and it belonged to my sister. It was in her bedroom growing up as a child. Then it came Somehow we room. got it, huh? It came to Reed's room. Yeah. And then I painted it black. It's now in the living room. It, the stereo's on top of it. And then in the drawers are our emergency supplies and our gift wrap. The drawers yeah. on the left used to be full of hundreds of empty CD, CD jewel cases, TV. and I've used most of them up. I gave some yeah. away. Um, yeah. yeah, what we need furniture. What we need is to have somebody come over and professionally or semi-professionally video us as if we're doing a. Uh, this is a a tour of our uh, New York brownstone. You know. <laughs> oh Lord. Um, so let's see any, um, before we go, any more topics, any more, th anything serious? Yes, please vote. Um, Trump is an absolute nightmare. He is an incompetent, bumbling fool. Well, it's not just Trump. It's the whole, the whole movement behind yes. him. Yeah. They want a white Christian nationalist nation. And not everybody is white or Christian. My many are not into nationalism either. My job is uh, continuing to be crappy because, I mean, supposedly we're getting another person, but who knows what job he's going to be given. And um, anyway, I don't want to talk about that, that, that depressing shit. Uh, but you do have an extra night off this week. Yeah, hurt my right shoulder blade. Last week it was the left shoulder blade. This week, it mysteriously, it's the right shoulder blade. Yeah. Bonnie rubbed some Tiger Bomb into it, and it was, you know, that warm feeling for a while, but now it seems to be going away. I could put more on it, babe. No, no, it's okay. Um, I'm trying to think what else is going on. I'm, I'm not too worried about this storm. I hope, I just hope the power doesn't go out. I can deal we with everything else. Room. Roof replaced last year, $13,500. So I'm hoping the roof not only makes it through, but has zero damage. Yeah. And we're, we've got the cars parked in a different position because we want to avoid any down limbs. A little bit of concern about Peter going out um, while it's still dark in the morning. But um, the winds, Reed called me today, 
Like, why don't you make Peter stay home? I'm like, read. She goes, he doesn't have an essential personnel job where she works at the hospital, but she's also literally around the corner, two streets from the hospital. And um, I'm so proud of her for living in downtown Athens because you know, yeah, that would have been a dream for me. You know, She's in the Cobham district, and um, it's just fabulous. She, she walks down the road and turns the corner, and the road takes her straight to the hospital. What well, I was going to say about um, threat of storm uh, topic, we have slowly over the past 15 to 20 years had all the really bad, big, dangerous trees around the house cut down and taken away. We had um, one or two fall. Yeah, a couple of years ago I came home and there was a tree across the driveway and another 15, 20 feet, and it would have crashed into our son's window. And it came close to where we park our cars and stuff. Yeah. yeah but I uh, had another tree taken down earlier this year. That was, what, 350 bucks? 300 bucks yeah. to do that? He literally felled it and left it just because I didn't want to pay $800 for him to dispose of it. But it went down into the brush, down towards the creek, and now all these little animals live in it. Well, the, the, the really dangerous one, we had somebody cut it down, and we, we didn't have money to have them haul it away. So it sat there, and we slowly tried to burn it over and over oh, and over. God, that took forever. And finally, uh, my mother's boyfriend, back when he was still able to get around Jesus came over here with a truck and we hooked a chain up to it and drug it over into the into the um the weeds at the side of the property but yeah we it's we, rotted now yeah it's rotted now but we tried to burn it again and again a family of raccoons took up in that we've got now over five acres and i love the idea that we are surrounded by wild land yeah we have less than a half acre that is maintained well, and I'm glad that we have the extra yeah. land now so that yes. if our daughter needs to have land to build a house on, she can have that extra land. Because yeah. yeah. here in this county, you have to have a minimum of two acres to put a house on. So now in we have... Arnoldsville. That's Arnoldsville only. Okay. So anyway, so if we die, our son can get this place and our daughter can get the, get the extra two acres and, and put a house on it. So anyway... Peter's going in for a, another scan. What, of his abdomen? Yeah, his abdomen to see if there are any perforations and damage. When is this going to happen? Mid-October. It's uh, strangely on a Sunday this year. Okay. The hospital's doing it. Well, I had an MRI recently, and um, finally, finally, I remembered to wear a long sleeve shirt. Because your arms stick to the inside of the thing, and when they jerk you around in there, you're afraid your head's going to move, and they have to start all over again. And um, I was so sleepy. I fell asleep. I have said all this last episode. I never, I never mind. You know, it was just over a year ago he had that liver biopsy. I was thinking, last night at work, I was thinking... I haven't, the last time I was really, really emotionally just beside myself was that night that he was in so much pain. I, I he, th This is before we really knew what was wrong with him. He was just mysterious pain. He was in agony in the middle of the night. And I came into your room and I just started crying because when your child is in pain and you're helpless, you just don't know what in the hell yeah, his, to his do. liver had backed up into his gallbladder, and his levels were way off, and he was in the hospital for a week, and then got out less than 24 hours later, he's back in the hospital again. Meanwhile, you have to and drive then, me to work during this whole fucking time. Remember that? And then I had to drive him up to the liver transplant people up in Atlanta and deal with the hepatologist there, and it was just hell. And I just parenthetically, I, parenthetically, I want to say, during that time period, I was able to take off work without the threat of being fired, and that's a benefit uh, of not only 
having a federal job, but also a benefit from uh, what the labor unions have fought and demanded over the years. And from a piece of legislation called Family Medical Leave Act that That's was right. done by Clinton and his group. And they, the Re- okay. Republicans and the hardcore Christians and libertarians want to do away with all that because their idea is if you can't pull your own weight even for one day, fuck you, you go to the garbage pay- pile. While Trump was in office... They tried to rescind the Affordable Care Act, which everybody refers to as Obamacare, and one person in the Republican Party saved it, and that was John McCain, and he famously did a thumbs-down vote. It was a big fuck you to them because he knew how important it was. If they had overturned Obamacare and gotten rid of the Affordable Care Act, it would have meant our son would not have insurance today. And he and millions of other people wouldn't have the same protections. Used to be when you had a pre-existing condition, they could deny you coverage, Mm -hmm. or they could charge you such an excessive amount you couldn't pay for it. They also had what were called lifetime caps. Once Once they had spent X amount of dollars on you, then that was it. We're not paying anymore. And... The Affordable Care Act took care of that for general health. Now, it didn't cover tooth care. It doesn't cover eye care unless you get cancer or mouth cancer, you know, the eye or whatever. But they have, as Trump put it in the debate, I have concepts of a plan to replace the Affordable Care Act. It'll be so much I have concepts of an idea, said Homer Simpson. (laughs) All right, we've got to wrap this up. So anything else to say? Vote, 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 Democratic. Get the fucking Republicans, the the fucking Christian nationalists, the fucking fascists out. Get them out once and for all. Get the pack, get, get decent people in. Yep. And realize that there are more people in the world than people who look like you and talk like you. And and they deserve the same rights that you have, no matter what you... You hear that, men? Women deserve the same rights. Yep. All right, everybody. Uh, We will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.